Good morning. So I'm out on a hike and I've been kind of protecting my energy this morning because there's so, so much coming through energetically that I want to be able to like, I wanted to be able to give myself space to solidify it into words to where it comes out, you know, because it keeps coming together and keeps coming together. But I was, I'm out here hiking. I'm looking for a place to sit. Um, there's a lot of people out in nature today. So I'm trying to find a place to sit that is kind of private. So I've come up on this side of this mountain here. Oh, there is, see that pillar. The name of this um, uh, river, I don't even know if you would call it a river. It's like a stream, uh, but this valley is named after that pillar. It's called Nachalamud. Um, the enormity of everything, the enormity of everything. You know, this morning I was feeling like, you know, going through all this spiritual awakening and I feel like I am being saved and I feel like um, I, ha I am being guided through this. I'm being guided through this every place that I keep getting stuck. And it only makes sense, right? Every place that I'm stuck, I get a reflection in. Every place where my, you know, I keep on getting tested by the universe. I mean, I know I say tested and it's not, it's not like the universe is coming and testing me. But when you start on this spiritual path and when you start cleansing, it, everything, it, the, 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 everything becomes more and more apparent. And when you have something in your psyche or something, you could call it a demon, which is something that hijacks your, your true highest self and makes you, um, uh, and makes you weak in those places. It's, it's these, uh, like, uh, uh, behaviors that we create in order to avoid certain subjects or beliefs that we have created throughout our lifetime or have been um, you know when, when uh, um, you know taught and and what is the word when you take a program and you like put it into something so we have been kind of ooh I'm coming up on a place that I can't get by look I'll show you it's like a pure sheer it goes straight down where Lola is. There's a ledge. It goes straight down to there. And that was why I turned on this video from the get-go. Because it was it was so um, symbolic for me. And maybe that's just a sign that this is the place where I'm sitting. It's nice. It's in the shade. Let's see if there's a place here that I can find that is comfortable. Um, not to sit right here. So, and oh, look, look, look. I'm right across from those caves. See, that's I see these, these, the pillar and those caves as divine feminine and divine masculine. And I was sitting right across from that view. I think it's so symbolic. And so I was hiking up this way and there, there's these bushes. This is one of them that are sticker bushes. Look, they have these like the whole bush is stickers. And I had to maneuver my way around these sticker bushes all the way up. And I was thinking to myself that I can't see the whole path. See, I just got to a place where I can't continue. I can't see the whole path, but I trust. And as I'm hiking up, as I'm hiking up, I, uh, I just take it like one step at a time. I go through the place that it has the, you know, I find a path through the sticker bushes and I go through there. I can't see what's beyond. I don't know where the path is going, but I take the next reasonable option. I take the next obvious step. And that's just, it's, I did a video about that before, but this is like a perfect example of it in real life. You know, it doesn't, I'm not afraid because I'm not at the top of the mountain yet right? I'm not saying, why am I not there yet? I trust that I'm going to get there. And then every single step that I take, I have to go through, right? You can't get to the top of the mountain from the bottom of the mountain without going, taking the steps. And taking the steps means that you work your way through the stickers on your way. And every sticker that you work through, you are getting closer and closer and closer. And the more you become, um, 
aware of the stickers and the more that you maneuver them easily because you already have experience on how to take the branch and move it or or there's a certain amount of stickers that you can just do you know walk through and just allow them to you know scratch you a little bit you know so, so slowly you become uh, like the master of the stickers as you're climbing up the mountain getting to the top you know where you're going you don't know exactly what it is to be there, but you know that that's where you want to go. And you know that there is, a, from up there, you can see everything. From the top, you can see all the way down to the bottom of the valley where you came from. So isn't that symbolic? And this morning, I really got up, and I got up wide open. There's something this morning and yesterday. There's something... There's, there's portals open. I can feel it. And, um, and this morning I woke up with it like this uh, realization of the enormity of it. The enormity of it. This is real. The spiritual awakening is real. It opens up these other dimensions to you. Uh, you, you all of a sudden see we're connected to everything. When you start seeing that we are of God, we are connected. You could call it the universe. You could call it the one. You could call it the the all divine, the everything. Uh, you could call it nature. You could call it. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, I realize that God has like this. Um, it's already the the word is already so archetype archetype. Yeah, it has so many archetypes already connected to it that. You know, if, if, because when you get to the stage, you can see it, you can see it. And then you see what Jesus was talking about, Yeshua, what Yeshua was talking about when, when he was leading people back to righteousness, he was leading people into a spiritual awakening. He was leading people back to understanding that we are all one, we are all connected. And when you start seeing the enormity of this, First of all, you see the proof of it in every single place. And part of me, like this morning, I wanted to get up and I wanted to like, how do you get the message out? How, like scream to, to the heavens, like, how do you get this message out? This, the enormity of it. And then I started feeling like so blessed and so graced and so like overwhelmed. And, and then I started feeling like, well, the enormity of this is here. That's how, you know, that, 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 that it, that it is so enormous that I am, I am everything, but I am nothing also at the same time. And I feel like, I'm so privileged to be able to even be on this spiritual awakening and to understand the enormity of it. And when I understand the enormity of it, I understand how provided I am for. There is so much divine knowledge and intelligence all around me that I can't even understand that is all around me supporting me in my path, that is giving me life, that is that is uh, allowing me to stay in this space-time energy matter uh, plane of existence there is divine intelligence way further than even my comprehension is holding this whole plane together and in that way I feel like I can just let go and trust I mean I have to trust anyway it's all around me anyway and I don't you know I can't understand I mean well that's not exactly true because during the spiritual awakening is what is coming into the understanding of that. And then you go into this place, this other realm of the divine where you understand that you are divine and you are connected to everything. And just, it's so overwhelming emotionally, you know, the enormity of it and, and realizing that I am being guided. I am being guided. I'm being guided back to my true self, back to the all, back to the one, to a place of enlightenment, to a place of all knowing, to a place of eternal understanding, to a place of everything. 
and I'm being guided back to my connection and understanding of my connection to all which sits above the ego. And then I'm coming into control of the ego and understanding that the ego, you know, then you can go back and forth. You can go in between ego land and higher land. And you can have this, this uh, human experience right alongside the spiritual experience. Only your, your human experience becomes that much greater because you're controlling it from the from the energetic plane or from the spirit plane where you know that all this divine and creation is uh, and creation and manifestation is a given because all of all of the universe everything around me is connected to me and at my fingertips and in a way of complete respect it's a duality i'm here to serve the universe but i'm also here to be you know to be of service so so the universe can also come through me and live through me and all of my ancestors from the beginning of humanity and, and all of my ancestors live through me. I am the outer edge of that life that has been given to me through generations and generations and generations. And this is something um, that I had a very deep understanding about when I saw all of my ancestors with me at the forefront of life, where the life is, where, you know, it's like, um, it's like a piece of wood being burnt, right? So as the outside of it burns, right, it has already lived through its life. There is just the outer shell that is always on fire. And that is like the life. That is where the energy of it is. But that couldn't be on fire with not, without everything that happened before it that, that ignited it, right? And so all of everything that happened before it is coming in, it is has moved into my life force so all of the generations that have come before me are in my life force and i can bring them forward this is something that my, that my twin was also talking to me about um i had a very deep realization about this and he added to it in in in, in a way of saying in a way of um understanding that you have all that power in you to bring forward when you, when you know, you can call on all of your, and, and when you call on them, they hear you and they come forward and they are of service. All of your, all of the, the forefathers and all of the life that has come through you through the generations. And so you have added power to power. You have all of those generations of power with you and you are never alone. It's always a, a, a multitude, multitude of, of, people and their power and and their higher knowledge because they have moved on into the higher plane so they're bringing just the pure love life and expression you know the pure expression through you and so it's also giving the generations the res the due respect and it not only when you give the generations the due respect you also understand and are able to fully appreciate uh, this life that you are living and you are also living it for them because as you create your life and the person that you are and the legacy that you create it it uh, reflects backwards from where you came from there's a whole bunch of there's a group of people down here in the bottom of this the valley I don't even know if they know that I'm here but their noise so I'm going to pause this I'm going to hike up a little bit further and find another place also going to bring this back to the point that I was going to make, which is the the being saved and Messiah. We're going to talk about Messiah a little bit. So, the thoughts that I was having this morning, the what was coming to me, is the enormity of it all. The enormity. It, all of a sudden, you realize that you were asleep. You were asleep and then you start looking around everybody's asleep not everybody there's a huge awakening happening now a huge awakening but there's so many and when you start waking up you start seeing it, it starts being more and more obvious and as you rise and it's the enormity of it and and you start seeing that all of the prophecies all of a sudden you understand what they were talking about and it's not mainstream it's not something it's something that is so overwhelming to understand 
that you feel like you want. I felt like this morning, like, I have to get the message out. I have to get the message out. How do you get the message out? And then I started feeling like, well, wait a minute. The message is so enormous and you are so small next to it that the message will find its way out. And I am in allowance, allowing the message to flow through me. And, and then I started realizing, you know, that, that I am a witness I am not only a witness, I'm trying to get my jacket off. It's like, it's starting to get hot, probably also from hiking, but also it's warming up a little bit. It's nice weather. Um, and I started realizing that, that as, as I'm going through this and becoming a witness and becoming a, a storyteller, telling the story of it, which is what I'm doing here, um, is, is, you know, bringing it into words is doing, um, It's not only helping me, see it's a paradox, it's not only helping me understand, but it's also bringing my witnessing of it outward. It's a, it's allowing the story to be told through me. And in that way, I feel like, um, like I am bringing my, I'm writing it. I'm writing it as I go along and and I also feel like the story is so huge that the story has its own divine plan the story itself you know the enormity of the message of of what this awakening is and connecting to the all and understanding it it it's so overwhelming and enlightening and and humbling it's so humbling and i started feeling like not only am i the witness of it and not only am i the storyteller of it i am also the proof of it so i am the story as i tell the story my coming to to full consciousness to coming to um full and full awareness in in my rising to my highest experience human experience which means rising into my light body and still being able to be you know have this human experience is the proof of it in itself so not only am i the witness of it i am the proof of it in myself and so is everyone else that is on the spiritual awakening path and awakening into themselves they are not only the storytellers but they are the example we are the storytellers and the example of it we show the proof of it within ourselves just within our being just within ourselves coming back to our full na true nature and the calmness of uh, coming into our calmness and into full self mastery uh, we, we just by being an example of it, we are awakening the masses, um, you know, because the soul and the spirit recognize it, recognize it when they see it. And I was, I was thinking about the Messiah and I was thinking about who I, who I call my twin. And I'm starting to feel like it's much bigger than just him and I. It's so much bigger. There's so many lives that that are being touched all around us. I see it all the time. There is a there is so much more to this than just that. I see him. Yeah, you know, there doesn't have to be any kind of ownership over it. I see him as he is reflecting me back to me because what is the Messiah? Messiah is the savior what, what does the savior means it means you, how do you save souls you save souls by showing them the path to their own enlightenment right you can't go inside of somebody and do the work for them but you can be a pure and clean reflection if you have purified yourself 
then you are back to the core level. So anything that you are reflecting out is going to be above the ego. And so with every single person that you meet, their ego is going to be touched by that pure light, by the soul light, right? So that is going to reflect them back to them regardless. You don't have to do anything. There is no, there doesn't have to be purpose in it. I mean, purposefulness. It can be, it can, it, there can be, because you, when you come to this level, you have the power of reflecting somebody back to themselves by, by telling them or by reflecting it to them, which typically is reflecting the purity in that spot, what the purity in that spot looks like. And then whatever is not in the purity and within them a, a hits up against that purity and it and it's and when something is false it starts shaking right truth stands in light uh, lies don't stand in light when you bring lies out into the open they are in the open so when you are uh, uh, when you are going through life by programming that is false, false programming that is not aligned with your true self with the true nature of the being of the all which the majority of the matrix there there there's so much that is not aligned with our pure nature and and how we are as a human animal uh a human being you know just being and so i started thinking about the enormity of this all i started thinking you know with with who i say is my twin and i've said it before that i feel like he is he has done so much work within himself that he shines out that purity that light and that light um that light <clears throat> my son is calling i'm going to send him a message that i'll call him back uh there okay and so when you are in um when you are in purity, you reflect, you become, you become a reflection for others as well. And the more you purify yourself, the, the purer of a reflection you can become. And you become, uh, you know, the, what, what is the Messiah? What does Messiah mean? Uh, the actual word in ancient Hebrew, it means the anointed one, the chosen one, the anointed one. And the anointed one you know it's not like you come in and you meet the messiah and then jing you're enlightened you have to do the work you have to uh and 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 in the in the ancient stories it's it talked about how he took demons out of people if you compare demons to wrong ways of thinking to uh reactions that you have developed because of your programming you know some people go to being victims some people going to avoidance avoidances of pure and clean right you uh, some people get really mad at things that they shouldn't get really mad at but it's an it's an it's something in their programming and that is the emotion that they go to in order to escape whatever whatever is coming in too deep to them, right? So then they have this reaction which stops whatever is penetrating from coming in. So wherever that a reaction is triggered, that is the amount of that they are that they are allowing within themselves. That's the amount of, of trauma. And because we build these walls around our inner selves, the thing is, is that we live within these walls. We don't go into our inner selves. See, if you are in control of the, and then, and then these behaviors control you, you get mad at everything. You don't understand why you're getting mad. You can't control it. And you just say, hey, oh, this person's making me mad and that person's making me mad. And, you know, you go into the blame game and then you never go inward and try to, you know, you can't understand it. You keep on getting into the same mind loop and still going around the same, the same circumstances and the same reactions again and again and again. And then when you meet a reflection outwardly that reflects this back to you and you can truly understand it, what I've told my, my, my twin before is that is that people have their their protections here but he's already here before they even know what you know he's already way inside uh before they you know he goes right past those protections to the inner core and just kind of goes chink and kind of shows it and then people go into 
like I am, you know, re self work, self repairing, self every time that that him and I have a contact, I go inward. And a lot of times it's going inward with with uh, uh, repairing things and and uh, you know understanding my thought pattern. She has a sticker stuck on her back, has her hair on it. Um, go into these the the you know, inward and repair false ways of thinking. It's just like the mud puddle stories and and uh, those kinds of things where I rise from them. And then sometimes I get reflections back that just, that I just feel like that show me my greatness. It's, and that's wonderful. And it allows me to like take power of uh, my archetypes and, and use them as tools and understand them and be in that uh, creative power. So I do, I, the enormity of it all. And, and I start feeling so overwhelmed, but then I understood that 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 I'm I'm not only a witness of it and telling of it as it's going on and as I'm going through this rising and all the things that I'm working through and all of the things that I'm understanding right because in these videos some of the time I'm working through my own demons I'm working through my own uh, falsity or my own weaknesses or I get into the victim mode and I start feeling sorry for myself and and I'm hurting and I'm in pain and I'm stuck in pain and I can't get out of the pain and and um, and then there's other videos like this one where I'm on top of it and I'm like looking in and I can see. So so some of the videos are done from a place of the experiencer and some of the some of them are done from the place of the um, watcher over of. And as 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 um, as I'm being healed. As I'm being healed through these external reflections that I'm getting from my twin, so you could say, and he, and he, he is an external reflection for everyone that he meets because of the, the, the work, the inner work that he has done, he reflects outward to people, the exact lessons that they need. And he gives it to them as the gifts. Um, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's really fun and amazing and it's like uh, to watch it happen and you realize and as you purify yourself or as I purify myself and rise I can see these places and I see the work that he's doing with people I see exactly what he's reflecting back to them and how he's doing it and it is like I feel like I'm a witness of it I feel like not only am I the witness of it I am also the storyteller of it I am also the translator of it. I am also the proof of it within myself. I am the living example of, of that uh, um, inner work that is happening and of the rising and, and telling the story as it's going on. You know, this whole spiritual awakening has been going on for the last 10 years. I think I've started these videos now, um, probably getting close to a year ago and telling the story and some of the videos that I look back at a year ago and I see where I was and where I am now it's just amazing the progress and also you know the lessons the lessons are deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because as you go through life and you're reacting to um, situations and stimulations you and you're also watching yourself as you're doing it and 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 you become the you become your own uh, um, the witness to yourself you become on top of it you become the experiencer and the observer at the same time and then you are in you know the 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 driver's seat of your life you know, you you know the emotions. The emotions are of this uh, of this three D plane, and they are there to show you something. They're there to tell you something. They're there to lead you. But you have to tune your emotions. You have to align your emotions. There's like a tuning progress, and it works alongside the mind. So you have to tune your emotions to align them with. So that they, so that when they, you know, it's like if you have a car and the tires are turning right or turned right or turned left or turned in different directions, 
then when you're steering, it's going to take you, you know, you, you, you might be, you know, it'll take you on the wrong path. You have to tune your emotions to where they are. They are aligned with the universe and with the all, with your internal self. And you have to also align your thoughts. So you have to use your emotions and process them with your thoughts and, 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 and fine tune them with your thoughts which is also fine-tuning your thoughts with your emotions. You have to align your emotions and your thoughts to be um, in sync with each other. This is kind of like marrying the two. Um, and I, it's so funny because these things that are coming to me, they're, they're, they're coming through, uh, and, and I'm realizing that a lot of the things are things that Yeshua spoke of of marrying your thought and your emotion and combining them and where they become one and where they work together. And that's also kind of like everything. Everything is like black and white. You have to have contrast. It's, uh, you know, there, there, there's duality and it's like the higher planes and the physical plane, or you could take it in so many different directions and look at it in so many different ways. And you could look at it spiritually, you could look at it scientifically, you could look at it physically, you could look at it through atoms, you could look at it. It's just amazing. There's so many different ways that you can interpret this world and they, they all live side by side. It, uh, what is the word? There's a co, co something, but they're also codependent. They're all dependent on one another. Everything is dependent on one another and everything is relevant to everything else. I mean, in order to be relevant to everything else, you also have to be dependent on it. It's the two sides of it. Um, and when you get into these these understandings and you see the enormity of it all, and and then at one side it's like, I want to scream, I want to say, look, 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 look at this. This is just amazing. Just you know, just just in, understand the the amazing and the and the miracle of life and the miracle of everything and that you're a part of it and and you want to scream to wake up wake up and then on the other hand you feel so small and you feel like okay there's a divine intelligence working here everything is working out exactly as it needs to be working out you know and the one point i have power in my life but on the other hand i can see that my life happened for me and to me and and you know i you know i made choices along the way and i put my power in different places but then when i look backwards i say did i really have a choice there or was i led so it's kind of like you get to this point where everything is a paradox where you can see you can see the extremes it's just like your emotions if you can the deeper you can go down into the the valleys the higher you can go into the joys and the and the light Everything is dependent, you know, it's like, what is white if there is no black? White can't exist if it doesn't have the contrast of black. And then on the other hand, you say everything is one. Everything is one big mechanism that works together. So everything is a paradox. And it's kind of like the spiritual awakening. You come to a place of balance where you are just kind of suspended in between everything. It's like if you have the power of the... the, the the, the, it's like if you have the flower of life and it's like you're sitting in the very middle of it and you're held there by, by the magnetism of everything around you and it has to be perfect, perfect, perfect magnetism to be able to hold you suspended there. If there's one thing that is not pure, that is not fully, uh, fully uh, um uh, in its strength, the magnets, right? If you have this, these magnets, let's say these magnets that are holding you in place, if there's one out of place, you're going to swing. And, and so every time we go up into this place where we are like in uh, pure sync, with our pure selves and we are sitting in that, in that uh, pure place, um, and then anytime that in life we come into a situation that we are not pure, pure of soul, pure of mind, uh, fully aligned within ourselves, we're going to be, we're going to be shot back down to do the work again. So then you go back down 
you do some more work and then you align yourself again. You come back up for like inspection. This is where the world, the universe tests you. And then you start going through life in this, uh, in this uh, place of suspension where you are exactly aligned and you are in perfect sync of dark and white and everything, everything is imperfect. Anytime you hit a situation where you are faulty in it, where you are not in your pure self, you're going to be tossed back down into the 3D world, into the ego to do the world, to do the work again, to overcome it, to align your emotions and your thoughts in that place so that you can rise back up for inspection. I'm seeing this getting pretty long. I think it pretty much made my point. The point of this whole thing is, and there were a lot of side points too. I really like this video. I love, we went into a lot of things, is the enormity of the spiritual awakening the understanding that uh, of of the messiah that the messiah is external reflection we are all messiahs of ourselves and we all every single one of us reflect out to others um places uh in their psyche and so so we are all messiahs and we're all um um saviors you know each of us that are rising in the spiritual awakening we become in this this light and, and think what light does light shines outwardly light is a beacon people are drawn to light and so we as we rise and the more we purify ourselves the more we become an example and the more that we become saviors <laughs> the, the the savior um and and um And the humility, 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 you, you know, when you, when you, when you feel like you are in awe of it all, you feel how enormous it all is. And then you think, well, I don't have to do anything, but just do exactly what I feel like doing, following my nose. And that will lead me in the, down the right path and in the right direction. And I will automatically be of service. Like when, like now I know that by making these videos, I feel like I'm in service when I started these videos, I didn't know that. It just felt like I have to, I have to do this. It felt like it was born out of me. And as it's progressing, I'm understanding more and more what these videos are about and why I'm doing them. And so if you've gotten to here and you've watched and, and, and you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe. I was told, uh, I would, I was told to ask for subscriptions. That was a message that I got. So and um, I guess I'm just going to play it by ear, whatever comes. Lately, I feel like there's a few days in, in a row that I don't feel like doing a video. Nothing comes out of me by nature, and so I just, I'm just i just letting it be. I don't want to force anything, and then what does come out, I feel like it comes out from the right place. It comes out when when everything has cooked and solidified into enough words for me to say it, so I'm just playing this all by ear. Um, and I am trusting in the universe that what needs to be of it will be of it, even if it's just reaching, you know, it, it's, it doesn't, it's about putting the message out there and trusting that, that whoever needs to find the message and that this is the place that they are on and these are the words that they need to hear, then, then, then the message is there for them. And I trust that in the divine intelligence of it all, as I'm rising into this and seeing the greatness of it all that there is a divine plan and there is a divine plan in in me and through me that is working through me there's nothing that i have to have to do um other than really just be and become and do as i naturally feel and that is what is going to lead me see see where i am that was what i was looking at as i was talking to you see the pillar and the divine feminine and divine masculine isn't that just something this valley is something else. So I really appreciate you guys watching. And um, if anything else comes up, I'll, I'll redo. Thank you.